Hey guys, welcome back. This is day 18 of your handicap guillotine challenge. And I've received a lot of emails from you guys basically asking about what is referred to as partial wedge shots. You know, what to do from 60, 70, 80, even 90 yards away when we're in those sticky numbers that give even tour players trouble. So we're going to break those shots down for you to give you the ability to hit, you know, really every yardage around the green, whether you are 10, 20, 30, 50, 70, or even 90 yards away. So again, if you've not done so already, please email me a video of your golf swing, as I want to be able to personally critique your action to give you the extra layer of polish you need to cut your handicap in half over these 21 days. So one of the shots that give tour players trouble all the time is their wedge play from 60 to 90 yards. A lot of them don't know quite how to hit the shots appropriately, therefore they lose spin, they lose control, and they simply don't even want to lay up to those numbers. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add a lot more depth to a short game arsenal to give you the easiest technique to control your distance from 60, 70, 80, even 90 yards away. So yet again, my name is Eric Kaplan. Um, I've had the pleasure of coaching multiple major champions, and I want to add a little bit of extra polish to a short game arsenal. Because so far what we've talked about is we've shown you how to properly make a chipping action. We said the most common issue in chipping is rooted in your posture, which is if I have all this rounding on my spine, if I just relax, the shoulders want to lift out of their sockets, and that's a manifestation of my chili dip, unless I want to lift on the way through, and there's my thin shot over the green. So we said in your short game, posture is really important. So standing up straight, shoulder blades slightly engaged, hinging your thighs back, spine's in a much more neutral position that allows for you to rotate. So what we said what a chipping action is, is the basic rotation of my upper body back, upper body through. That's the basic element of what makes a chip. And as I like to say, the enemy of any golf swing occurs when rotation stops. So if I have my shoulders out of their sockets and I happen to lift on the way down, there's my flip. If I just stop rotating, because I'm trying to stay down too much, my hands are also going to want to get active. So that's where this whole idea of shoulder engagement and rotation back and through become really critical in every aspect of the short game. We dive a little bit deeper. We talk about a pitching action. So a pitch is a shot that, yes, goes a little bit higher, further, and has a little bit more spin than a, pit, than a chip does. But what produces this? Because it's not about getting here and adding more wrist hinge, but rather say, what changes the downswing? My backswing elements are the same. The only thing that changes is my lower body rotates through. And because this is a bigger engine, the ball will go higher, further, and have more spin. And so the reason in the past people cannot speak this language is yet, yet again attributed to your posture. You know, for as long as your weight was over the balls of your feet when you play golf, the lower body is in a position that does not allow, allow, does not allow you to rotate. And from here, you come up and out of your posture, your hands would have to extend. That's why the way that previous coaches would tell you to create speed is by bringing it back to 9, 10, 11 o'clock by virtue of adding more wrist hinge. The issue with this is how much my wrist unhinge on the way down will change the bottom of the arc for each and every swing, which makes distance control very difficult. So again, to dive a little bit deeper, what we're talking about today is partial wedge shots. You know, what to do if we are a little bit further away from the green, that 60, 70, 80 yard shot. So again, we're adding yet again only one extra moving part to this, which is basically the next evolutionary step, if you will, towards a full swing. So we talked about rotation, you know, rotation from the scapula. And my favorite drill to feel this is that basic one ball drill where put a ball right between the palms of your hand. And if you can rotate keeping the ball in the same spot in your hands, it means you're only accessing the scapula. Because if you were to lift on the way back, you'd lose the golf ball. If your hands get active, you'd also lose the golf ball. So again, this is how we mitigate those variables. So yet again, upper body back, upper body through is a chip. Upper body back, lower body through would be a pitch. So how do you hit a ball that goes a little bit further than a pitch without trying to hit the ball any harder? It's about creating a little bit of what's called trail arm flexion. So we're going to rotate on the way back, and now we're going to allow that trail arm to fold a little bit. It's not coming from the hands. The hands are going to hinge a little bit because the trail arm folding more underneath. So to have you feel this a little bit more, hinge your right elbow, put the left hand on the club, and rotate. This is putting you in a position where you're in a partial wedge technique territory, so to speak. So what we're going to have you do is you're going to bring it back with the rotation and also allowing that right arm to hinge a little bit more. So from here, what's going to allow you to hit a partial wedge is the same thing that allows you to hit a pitch, which is upper body rotates back with a little bit of more softness of your right elbow, and now the lower body rotates through. And again, the enemy of any golf swing occurs when rotation stops, which is exactly why we're going to have you go ahead and hit that partial wedge. So with my lob wedge, I find a shot that goes roughly about 40 yards. So to do that again, as 
So if I want a ball to go a little bit further than that, I'm not going to try to hit the ball any harder. I'm going to grab a different club. So let's say I am you know, closer to 60 yards away, 55 to 60 yards away. I'm going to go ahead and grab my sand wedge, same rotation, same trail arm flexion. Now from here, the lower body is going to rotate on the way through. And there's my about 55 yard shot. If I want a ball to go a little bit further, of course, I'm not going to try to hit the ball any harder. I'm going to grab not my sand wedge, but my gap wedge. And this is a really easy way for me to hit those 70 to 75 yard shots where I'm going to rotate upper body back, create a little bit of flexion. We talk about this a little bit more in terms of how actually this right arm works in the deeper elements of our program. And there's my 70 yard shot or so. And if I want to work on hitting you know, kind of that 90 yard shot, some people consider it to be a little bit more of a knockdown. I can grab my pitching wedge. Hinge into posture, shoulder slightly engaged, rotation with trail arm flexion, and then my lower body is what rotates through. And there's my about 90 to 95 yard shot. So again, what we're doing here is we're building these understandings. We're saying that the chip rotation of my upper body back, upper body through, evolves into a pitch, which is a rotation of my upper body back lower body through. And because this is a bigger engine, the ball will go higher further with more spin than a chip would. Again, the next step passing a pitch would be a partial wedge, which is rotation with letting that right arm fold underneath. The right arm works this way. Some people describe this as feeling the club's opening up a little bit more. This is a symptom of that right arm folding more under. That's exactly why shoulder engagement is so important, because if I'm trying to get my arm to fold underneath, or if I suffer from a flying right elbow, my shoulders out of their sockets, that's a symptom of it. If my shoulder blades are a little bit more engaged, I'm turning on muscles that allow for me to properly rotate. So to kind of work our way backwards a little bit more, if I'm hitting a partial wedge, that's rotation of my upper body with some flexion of the trail arm. And then from there, my lower body is going to rotate on the way through. So I know if I'm hitting a pitching wedge, the ball is going to go somewhere between 90 and 95 yards. If I'm doing the same concept with a pitching wedge but hitting a pitch which is rotation of my upper body back and my lower body through I know that ball is going to go somewhere between 40 to 45 yards upper body back lower body through a little bit of a shorter shot and if I happen to have a shot that was you know somewhere in that 25 to 30 yard range I might just hit a standard chip which is upper body back upper body through so I can go ahead and get really good at calibrating all my distances by having these three specific techniques, a chip, a pitch, and a partial wedge. And I can do a good job of hitting all my different wedges and getting myself calibrated from everywhere from five yards all the way to 90 yards. Go ahead, next time you're on the golf course, you know, grab 10 golf balls, practice these different styles. So today is all about partial wedges. It's all about rotation and allowing that right arm to fold a little bit more underneath. A drill that you can do at home to feel this Get into your posture, hinge the right elbow, put the left hand on the club, and rotate. Hinge the elbow, left hand on the club, and rotate. What we're syncing up are two elements, which are also critical in the golf swing, and this is going to get you a position where you're ready to hit partial wedges. And again, this is going to be actually the same blueprints that we utilize in hitting full shots as well, as again, I want that right arm to fold more nicely underneath as is what connects to me more powerful muscles of the back that literally will help you crush drives further than you ever thought possible. So again, you know, before we get too deep, um, you know, go ahead and give this a shot. Practice this at home. I know it's going to add a lot of depth to your short game arsenal because I want to give you the ability to hit the ball pin high everywhere around the green inside of 100 yards. For a lot of these tour pros, they have issues saying, hey, I couldn't hit my partial wedge of shots well because it might be bringing it back you know, too far and then deselling on the way down. From there, they lose all of their spin around the greens. You know, what they also could be doing, they could be adding a lot of wrist hinge and trying to change how much speed they apply to the back of the golf ball, which also very whimsical, as this creates the conditions by which you hit the ball heavy or thin very, very easily. So again, by keeping more things the same in each and every part of your game, your consistency will skyrocket. So go ahead and give this a shot. I know it's gonna add a lot more um, thinking around the green, but it give you the ability to calibrate your distances the same way if you are you know, 120 yards from the hole, you know, you know you want to make a full swing with the sand wedge, let's say. You know, if you are 70 yards from the hole, you know that I can make a partial wedge shot 
with my sand wedge and be able to kind of fill in those good distance gaps. Give us a shot. I know it's going to help you save par literally so many more times around the green.